Hey there, it's Derek here from Pacific Coast Auto in Japan, and we're looking at a 1990 Toyota Soarer. This one here with an inline six cylinder, very similar to a Toyota Supra, basically known as the Gentleman's Supra. These were very, very popular in Japan. The Soarer eventually came to the USA as the SC300 Lexus, which a lot of people really love. This one here is the second generation Soarer, and that is the third generation Soarer. So this one comes from 1990, has a twin turbo inline six cylinder 1GG engine. It's a two liter straight six, a very odd uh, type of engine. Nowadays, your straight sixes almost don't exist outside of BMW and Mercedes-Benz. But uh, Toyota loved their inline six cylinder game back then with the 1J and the 2J superseding this engine. And so the two liter inline six is really weird. Usually you'd think of a four cylinder inline six, but here because of, uh, to fit it into a certain tax category here in Japan, you would need under two liters. And to compete against Nissan and their Laurel and other cars like that, Gloria, Leopard, this uh, competed directly with Leopard. They wanted to have a six cylinder so they can say that our two liter has a six cylinder. Pretty cool. Now I'm not in love with these engines. I feel like, uh, you know, the 1J is a fantastic engine. This one's not as good, but any six cylinder twin turbo engine is still going to be a cool engine to have. Has a original intercooler down there. I don't know if you can see that. Probably a good idea to get the oil and the coolant changed on it. The coolant looked okay, the oil looked okay, no problems, but good to get those changed. And definitely the engine room needs to have a cleaning. It has this white powder on a lot of stuff. You can see it just comes right off. And then uh, take a look. Electronically modulated suspension in 1990. Pretty cool. It's the Toyota Thames system, which they still use nowadays. They just don't call it that. Okay, I'll close the hood. The dampers don't work. That's why you see me holding it up. I'll switch the engine off and we'll take a look at the condition of the car. This one was bought for export over to the USA. You can get the next generation soar under the 25 year rule, uh, but these uh, classic cars, they're getting kind of hard to come by. And this one is in really good condition. I think you'll like this. Especially look at how cool in 80s that looks. With its own little turbo lamp over there. Turbo, you've got the power of your turbo now. Okay, so I'll switch this off. I'll come back to the interior in just a second. But for now, let's have a look at the auction inspection sheet and we'll compare the condition from that to the real life condition. And I have to say, I'm pretty satisfied with this one. It's a nice car. So the sheet here, I'll just translate this from Japanese into English. It's a 1990 Soar 2.0 GT twin turbo L is the edition. Two liter engine, auction rear 3.5, interior C, power steering and power windows. This one has no sunroof, it's a full hard top. 171, 503 kilometers, that is authentic mileage on this one. Automatic transmission. Um, I don't think that this generation came with a manual. I'm trying to think if I can, if we've bought one before, and I don't think so. I think the Soar has always been automatic. Um, no, that is not true. You can get it with a manual. I don't know about the first generation, but those are really, really rare nowadays. Anyway, power steering, power windows, original white, has not been color changed. Registered until 2024, February. That means it last passed its inspection here in Japan in February of this year. So just last month. Original aero parts for front, side, rear, and rear spoiler. When they say aero parts, they mean like these side skirts that look so much like the AW11 MR2 or the 86 had side skirts that look just like those. Front bumper here has a nice deep chin spoiler and has extra intakes here for your intercooler. Really cool. And then the plastic on top of the headlights there, kind of the two layers there looks really nice as well as the yellow fog lights down there. Lights on the fenders, rear spoiler, and the rear bumper with its own little spats there. Full original condition in terms of exhaust. Suspension is aftermarket and the wheels are aftermarket. Originally these could come with a set of BBS RGs from the factory, which is really cool. And these do look similar to a BBS RG in terms of their style, but they're not the exact same. The RGs are an expensive wheel nowadays, but it was cool that Toyota had them from factory. Aftermarket 16 inch wheels. Notes here says um, Esperia lowered suspension and toll collection box for Japanese highways. 
And then the report section, dashboard comes up or is deformed. Not mentioned also this AC vent here is also cracked. Can you see that? Probably not. There you go. I'll show you that when we get to the interior. Seat, dirty, and cigarette burn. There's actually only very, one very, very mild cigarette burn, but I do want to show you there is some repairs done to the seat, I believe. See the little white dots on it? Or lighter colored dots? I think those are repaired cigarette burns. Now, it doesn't smell like cigarettes inside. I don't think that the previous owner was a smoker. But smoking in cars in Japan is like their favorite pastime here, and especially so in the 1980s and 90s. It was much more popular than it is nowadays. And a car like the Soror was owned by, you know, people who thought of themselves as cool. Maybe there's an overlap there with people who smoke cigarettes. Okay, steering wheel has repair marks on it. I'll show you that in a sec. Uh, hood damper doesn't work. You already know about that. Right baffle is dented. You'll actually notice this very slightly between the door and the fender here. It's just a little bit off. Just a little bit. It's not that noticeable. If you know what you're looking for, you can notice it. So it has had some sort of a bump. It is not our grade because it's not been repaired from an accident. Just some very small damage to what would be considered the frame. Wheel scratched. Rear panel dented. Again, that's part of the, the, what they consider the frame. Front support dented. Underside has been painted. Various scratches, dents, and repairs. And then looking at the body, we have a door that's been replaced here. A repainted fender, repainted fender, paint peeling on the back bumper, repainted trunk. An A2 on this door. I'll show you that now because it's on my mind. It's right here. And a U2, which you probably already would have seen. It's right there. Okay, so that's really the damage on the body. Overall really good looking and the more i look at this car the more i like the looks the more i feel like the mark III supra just doesn't hold a candle to the really long and low down looks of this like this is an inline six cylinder but the engine only like there's a hole almost two feet in front of the engine <laughs> people have seen the um style of tuning here in japan called bosuzoku style and this is one of the darling cars in that uh type of tuning with the big wings and the exhaust pipes and the over fenders and whatnot. It is a very, very unique look for a car nowadays. The very low and long three-box look, two-door coupe. You know, manufacturers don't make two-door coupes much anymore because people all want a four-door. But that door is huge. It makes it for <clears throat> really easy to actually get into the back seat. And it's funny to think this, by Japanese standards, would be considered a fairly large car. The back seats are still tiny in it. All the space goes to how long that hood is. And look, it's just barely above that wheel, and it's a small wheel too. Like, that's below hip level for the hood, even on super short people. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the details. The bumper is, <coughs> excuse me, pollen me today. The bumper is generally good, but has some damage here. And it has some flex cracks over here. The car's not low enough that it needs to be lifted up before shipping. Plenty of the cars that we buy do have to get lifted up for shipping. But this one's going to be okay. It has a uh, griffin for the logo. And they kept that for the next, for all the generations of the SOAR of the four generations. Okay. 24 valve twin turbo, it says right there. And then this side bumper that's silver... It's really discolored. And so it might be a good idea to get that painted. And I think it would look really good if painted black. Okay, it has these metal visors so that you can smoke inside the vehicle. Japan loved their visors even back then. You can get these for like plenty of cars from the 1970s and forward here in Japan. And they moved away from the metal ones into a plastic one somewhere around the early 90s. Most 80s cars still had the the metal ones like this. Huge taillights, and it says the type of car inside the taillights. So if you ever got that changed, you would lose your GT Twin Turbo L badge and your Toyota Soarer badge. Over here, you can see the trunk is a little bit misaligned. Love the look of this spoiler. I would love to have one of these as well as the AW11 MR2. They share very similar styling cues, and um, I think a lot of people who have grown up around Toyotas 
really, really like this generation of Toyota. Very high quality feel, very reliable, very cool. Sometimes tend to rust, but this one, barely any rust. There's nothing around the fenders, nothing on the underside I could find. There is some on the inside of this door. So let's have a look at that. So there's a bit right here, and there's another bit down here. And then there's nothing, nothing big down here, but there are a little bit at the drains. I'm not sure if you can see that or not, but uh, nothing major. Doors are huge, and they have this really cool hinge that pulls the door forward past the fender. The later versions of this door had those too, like the third gen. And look at that. So big. Probably not safe in a side accident, though. Okay, the steering wheel. Actually, I'll just show you the overall interior. It is a beige interior. Seats are fairly well bolstered. You would consider this a grand touring car, not really a sports car. Okay, so steering wheel repairs. Have a look around here. You can see some sort of texture. This is uh, had some sort of a putty put on in order to restore it. Original steering wheel. And it feels really big, actually. Deformed dashboard is in here. There's also some discoloration up here. I don't know if I can show you that. The mic might get in the way. Okay, floor carpets are really thick. They say sore on them. It needs to be cleaned. The car has kind of a dusty feel to it, so it needs a proper cleaning. But for a car that's this old, we're now at 32 years old for this, so I bet you a ton of people that are watching aren't even as old as this vehicle is. This is kind of neat. Where's that key? Here it is. Air conditioning here. Let's just turn this on. It's microprocessed automatic air conditioner. Not many cars in the 1990s had this climate control style AC. Very cool. Uh, the buttons are peeling though in a number of places. And um, also down here. And I think it's a substance on here that makes it blue. Not sure what. Technics PLL Synchronized AM FM Receiver. Japan was really into the stereos back in the 80s, and so you can see that in the cars as well with all of their specialty stuff. Turn up your bass. Oh, it's already up all the way. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this is pretty dirty inside here. Oh, there's one cigarette in there I didn't notice. Huh. It just popped in from the back. When I looked at it last time, all I saw was that. So yeah, it has been smoked in. Now I'm changing my mind and I feel like the previous owner was smoking. The shifting is fine. It has the uh, sports and non-sports TEMS. It stiffens up your suspension for you. You can see it up there in the corner. It says TEMS hard and soft. Don't know what that stands for. Toyota electronic modulating suspension maybe. And it looks like we're almost out of gas. So that just beeps like that. Okay, power lumbar support and bolster support. That's cool, only for the driver. And this has been rewrapped and it sags here. Okay, into the back seats now. Now you get, this works, all the electronic seat works. To get into the back seat, you usually would do it through the passenger side because that one will slide forward. This side doesn't. You can still get in if you're limber. And basically, no room in the back seat for any legs. But it does look comfortable back there. Kind of strange. I'm going to be limber for a second here. There's a dent here in the seat. That black part there is not a hole. I'm not sure what it is, but there's a dent there. And let's have a look at this cushion. Just a regular cushion. Okay. Trunk is not huge, but it's not tiny either. And there's no rust underneath the trunk.
Okay, there is a little bit of the beginnings of rust right here, some chipped paint, and on this side over here, a little bit of rust right there. So pull this up and get that painted so it's not going to spread. There it is, really cool vehicle. I really wanna just go for a drive in the countryside with the Soarer. And people recognize these. The advertising here in Japan was huge. Everyone knows, oh, Soarer, I remember those from the 80s. Kind of weird to think because I hadn't ever heard about these until the third generation. There it is. Okay, so if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Thank you so much for watching and have a nice day.